The Minister of Forestry and Fisheries, Tina Jumat Peterson, is taking public protector Tuli Madonsela to court. She's challenging Madonsela's damning report, which found her guilty of squandering public funds by awarding an 800 million rand tender to Second Jalo Marine Service Consortium. The Minister joins us in studio now to talk more about this court action. Minister, thank you for joining us on Morning News today. Thank you very much for having me on your program. What is the issue? Uh, with the public protector's report for you? The minister does not get involved in the allocation of quotas. When the quota was, uh, when the tender was allocated, the 800 million tender which is in dispute, I recognized that there were irregularities and administrative flaws. I stopped the tender. I personally stopped the tender. Not a cent was spent on that tender, so there was no fruitless or wasteful expenditure on the tender. I do believe that um, when this investigation was done, the body of the investigation and the executive summary do not correlate. So I have, I have se senior legal opinion from two respected lawyers that the report is inaccurate and that it will be set aside in a court of law. At what point did you stop the tender? Was it before the public protector began investigating or when she brought it or when it was brought to your attention? Was it during her investigation or at the start of it? Before the public protector started investigating, as soon as the tender was awarded and there were certain um, areas, the, the losing bidder was complaining about it, I then asked my legal team to look more closely at the tender. Mm. And when my legal team advised me that there were discrepancies in the awarding of the tender, I cancelled the tender. Have you identified who is responsible in your department though? Absolutely, and those responsible have been taken to task. In terms of what, what, what have you done? It is an administrative process. It's not a political process. Mm. I have asked the, um, the public protector, my department sent a letter on the 14th of January asking for a discussion on this. Not asking, but explaining to her that there are certain glaring inconsistencies or, and inaccuracies in her findings. Mm. The public protector has requested the president to take disciplinary action on me or against me on the basis that there were the delayed allocation of fishing quotas. Mm. Her report was presented on the 4th of December. The deadline for the allocation of fishing quotas was the 31st of December. Mm. So you cannot find someone guilty on the 4th of December of missing a deadline, which is only there on the 31st of December. Her report was premature and her finding was premature. Her finding, the matter which she also says the president should take this reaction on, is the fact that there was an alleged decimation of fish, fishing stocks. Mm. She uses the word alleged. Now, if you use the word alleged, and I must be disciplined on that, it's an allegation. In her own report, she speaks about the alleged decimation of fishing stocks. Now, Minister, the, the other issues at, uh, at hand, of course, were where was the awarding of the tender to Second Jalo? The other was the, uh, the, the uh, canning of the contract, if we had to put it that way, with uh, Smit Amandla as well, which had been doing this job for, what was it, 10 to 12 years, and then obviously not observing the, the, the period of uh, when, you know, to the um, handover period of the sort of three months afterwards. Did you personally sign off on those at the time? The public protector in her report, in the body of her report, in the investigation, she acknowledges and compliments us mm -hmm. for acting legally. The tender was already on a month-to-month -month extension, so we did not act legally. We had given Smith Amandla a six-month extension, and after the six-month extension, there was a month-to-month -month extension for a further three months. There was thus no abrupt handover of, of the, the contract. The, um, the contract was also close to two days away from the due date. So by that time, we had already handed over the contract to the Navy. Hmm. Two days.
before the contract was due to be terminated. Remember, we had already extended it by six months. But she also had has already she also also uh, said that the handing over of the process to the navy was not the best decision because they're not they, they weren't equipped to deal with the kind of duties that that entailed. Her own report says that there was no evidence to at that stage to suspect that the Navy did not have the ability. That is why her investigation and the body of her evidence does not speak to her findings. Her own investigators last week Friday said in a meeting in Parliament that their investigation and her executive summary are two different things. But nevertheless, Minister, she is standing by her findings. She says that she doesn't believe that any court is going to change anything uh, when it comes to these findings uh, in that report, but you are asking the court to review it and or correct it or set it aside. What will you do if the court does neither of those? Nobody is infallible. The public protector is a human being. I respect her office. It's a chapter nine office and I respect the office of a constitutional body. Mm. I will not disrespect the office of the public protector. Mm. I will not disrespect her, but I want to clear my name. She cannot find me guilty prematurely on something on the 4th of December when the due date was only the 31st of December. There are glaring irregularities in her report. I have two senior counsel who's, who have advised me that just on that matter, the court could set aside the report. I believe that she may stand by her report, but I will go to court to clear my name. Now, your other recourse has been to approach the president. Let's listen to a clip. You had a media briefing at the weekend, but you didn't want to say exactly uh, what your discussions with Jacob Zuma entail. Let's have a listen to that. Her investigation has been completed. And we only have recourse to the president and to the court. My discussions with the president, I refused to answer. Now, Minister, if, if you're hoping for clarity and you're hoping for transparency in this process, why are you not able to tell us what the president has said? I mean, has he decided, if you can give us a clue, if you still don't want to reveal it, has he decided that he will follow the recommendations of the public protector and has he indicated to you what action he might take against you, if any? That is up to the president. I am not the president. I'm Did not he the say to you though in, that in any meeting? I do not speak on behalf of the president. Mm. I have consulted with the president. The presidency has yet to receive a formal copy of a report. Her office has not yet sent the presidency a formal copy of the report. And I think that I is cannot what wait for that. That is what Tuli Maronsela is, is her other point, is that she thinks your court action is actually premature and that the president hasn't actually had a chance to peruse this, to decide on whether he will follow the recommendations, on whether he will take any action against you. So in her, in her statement, saying that this is actually premature, do you think, I not think maybe it is a bit premature? I, belie I believe that her office has disrespected the office of the president by not sending him an official version of her report three months after the report is due. Parliament finished its business on Thursday. Mm. There's no way that Parliament is going to be able to address this matter. I took this matter to court on Friday because Parliament closed on Thursday. Do I have to wait until the new Parliament to have my matter discussed? But do you not think this has sort of brought more attention to you and the cause? I mean, if the president had had a look at this and he had seen maybe there's not any real reason for, uh, you know, for any action to be taken against you, that you might have actually shot yourself in the foot a little bit? I do not think so. The, the law does not say that the president has to um, offer an opinion. I have discussed the matter with the president. I have, on my side, I have presented the president with a copy of the report. Her you office, gave him a copy? Yes. Right. Her office failed to send him a report. I, uh, I sent the office of the president a report with my dissatisfaction and my concerns about the irregularities in her report. I'm satisfied that I have engaged the president sufficiently. Okay, so he has yet to go through this and he has yet to indicate to you what action he will take on this. What the president does is entirely up, uh, up to the presidency and it's entirely upon his office. On my part, I have done what I needed to do. Her recommendation was for the president to find me guilty. So if the president finds me guilty, what recourse do I have? My only recourse is to the court. Minister, also lots of questions since your press conference on where, on, on, over the weekend is about the timing of 
you coming out with this court action and with the Nkanda report due out tomorrow, also by the public protector, we've known that there are sentiments flying around that, you know, there, there are lots of efforts to discredit the public protector ahead of that Nkanda report, which is the big one, no doubt, that, you know, that everyone's looking at this year. Um, just your response to that and people thinking that this is an attempt to actually discredit her to using this, this report about, about your department is one more tactic. Parliament finished its business on Thursday. Parliament did not clear my name. I served papers on the public protector on Friday. This is a sequence of events. My lawyers have been preparing arguments and lawyers at that senior level do not give their opinions overnight. Mm -hmm. In fact, you do not even receive appointments with them overnight. The only commonality I have within Kandla report is that the public protector's office and I believe her office was the only common denominator. On the same day, three reports were leaked to the media. It was the Nkandla report, it was my report, and it was Minister Dina Pule's report. Mm -hmm. It was leaked on the same day. It was published in the same newspaper. And the article was written by the same journalists. The only so what common are you actually saying in a nutshell, Minister? The only common denominator is the Office of the Public Protector. So you're saying dirty tricks? I'm not. I, I only stick to the facts. I do not assume anything. I do not want to discredit the Office of the Public Protector. I simply want to clear my name. All right, and just very quickly for us, uh, in, in a few seconds, has the, the President indicated when he will get back to you after going through the report and when he will get back to you with some kind of response? That is entirely upon the Office of the President as for now, my, the public protector, on the 14th of January, we wrote her a letter. She said she does not engage on the report. So now I have two options, going to the president, which I did, or going to court. She advised us. I'm acting on her advice. All right. Thank you very much, Minister of Forestry and Fisheries, Tina Jumat-Peterson, on her court. Know more about your world. ENCA.com.